Every system has users, and you need a system to manage those users. Hi, my name is Stephen Fluin, and today on Demos with Angular, we're going to take a look at building out a user service that allows us to centrally manage the authorization and authentication of our users. Then we're going to hook it up to a backend using Firebase in order to get a very nice Google sign-in experience as part of our application. And then we'll see that that data flows all the way from Firebase into our application in real time. Let's get started. As always, we're starting with an ng-new project, and we can see this on disk if we take a look at the user folder. Now, our goal today is to actually build out a service that's going to give us the superpowers we need to understand what role the user has, whether or not they're authenticated, and then also offer functions like login and logout. And so today we're actually going to be using Angular Fire to accomplish this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to yarn add at Angular Fire 2, which is the Angular library that uses Firebase, and I'm going to also install Firebase into my project. Now, once I have these, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, set up a new Firebase project in my application. So the way you do this is you go into your app module and you're going to import the Angular Fire module from Angular Fire 2. And the Angular Fire module, when you import it, is going to have a method called initialize app. And then this initialize app method is going to take an object. And so we actually have to come up with this object. And uh, in order to do this, we're going to set up a brand new Firebase project. So if we jump over to the Firebase console, we can say uh, add project. And I'll give it a name like user service example. And then uh, we'll just use all of the defaults here. We'll hit create project. And now there's two things that uh, we're going to want to set up once we get this going. We're going to want to set up authentication. We're going to want to set up the database. But for now, uh, let's just go ahead and get this integrated into our app. And so if we click on the web setup here, it will actually give us the object that we need to plug in right here. And then we're going to go ahead and add a prettier config just because I hate double quotes and I hate all of the TSLint errors. And so uh, I always jump now into my package JSON and I just paste this little prettier config. And then I go ahead and I update my editor config to just match my own personal preferences. And so now if this is correct, we should be able to format the document and get it nice and formatted by the editor. All right, so you can see this is just the standard Firebase config that the service gave us back. And now what we want to do is we want to jump into that Firebase config uh, and go ahead and set up authentication. So you can set up whatever authentication methods you want. I'm going to go ahead and just set up Google uh, as that's probably the most common one I use for my application. So we'll just go ahead and set up my email address here. And now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to make sure that we have the real-time database turned on. So I'm going to jump directly to the real-time database here. I'm going to create a open database because in general, um, I actually don't mind what data people read from my Firebase services. I only care what they modify. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll set up a little bit of the user permissions a little bit later. But first, let's set up the authentication service that I'm going to use throughout my application. So uh, and on the CLI, I can do this with ng-generate service and we'll just call it user service. And if you take a look at the user service itself, it's just almost blank here. And what we can do is we can start to define methods. So um, if you wanted to stub out this user service, you could actually do something like import uh, observable of from RxJS. And then what you could do is you could define a couple observables that you're going to use throughout the application so that maybe the first one is uh, UID, which is going to be equal to a new observ or excuse me, an observable of. Uh, we'll just maybe say one, two, three for now. And then we'll say is admin is going to be defined as true. Now I can come up with whatever methods I want here. These are all just going to be observables that I'm going to listen to throughout the rest of my application. Um, and we'll actually be tweaking these uh, once we connect up to the database. But now that I have a starter set of properties here, 
um, I can actually bind to those in my component. So let's go ahead into my app. And now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, inject the user service. So I'm going to say constructor user of user service. let VS Code auto import that for me. Uh, and I'm going to make it public so I can access it directly from my template. Um, what I can do in the HTML now that I have this user service is I can say uh, div star ng if uh, we can now take the UID of the user. So I can say user .uid pipe async as UID. And then maybe just throw out that UID for the user so we can see that we're logged in successfully. And then what I can do is I can build out and elaborate the structure and maybe say something like div star ng if equals user dot is admin by async. User also has its admin superpowers. All right, so now we have a simple page that takes some of the information about the user. Maybe we want to also say else login. And say you need to log in. And we'll have a button and we'll just say log in on this button. And let's just for completeness make a logout button. So if we take a look at our application now, we have the users logged in. We can see one, two, three, the user has admin superpowers. Obviously the logout button doesn't work yet. So let's go ahead and wire that up. So because we're using uh, Firebase, getting the UID is actually really, really easy. So uh, if we just take the user service here, what we can do is let's first wire up a login and logout button. So in our constructor, we're gonna want to get access to AF off. Um, and this is gonna be of type angular fire off. And then let's make sure that we do all of our appropriate imports in the module. So now that we have Angular Fire configured, we can just import the features from the sub modules as much as we need. So we're going to import Angular Fire off module from Angular Fire 2. Perfect. Uh, slash auth here. All right. So now in our user service, we should be able to inject Angular Fire auth. And now what we can do is we can define our UID as a map of the auth state that we get from the Angular Fire auth. So I'm going to import map from rxjs slash operators. And now we're going to say instead of equals observable of one, two, three, we can just say this dot af auth dot auth state dot pipe because auth state is an observable. And then we'll call this auth state and that's going to take the auth state and give us back the UID. And this needs to be in a map operator. All right, so auth state. Oh, it's just authstate.uid. Perfect. All right. The other thing we need to do is if we want to be wiring up our um, login button, we're going to need to actually also import Firebase itself. So one thing to note is this imports all of Firebase, so you'll get a dev warning. Uh, in general, you want to be importing directly from the kind of end uh, endpoint, but for now, just for development mode, we're going to import the whole thing. So uh, I'm going to say this dot if off. So we're going to use the Angular Fire service. And we're going to tell it that we want to sign in, uh, and I, I like sign in with pop up. I feel like it's the best user experience um, because they can kind of see who's initiating, who's continuing this. Uh, they don't lose the context of why they're signing in. Uh, and then we're going to use that auth from Firebase, and we're going to say, let's use the Google auth provider. This is also where you'd be specifying if you wanted to use a different authentication provider. Uh, and then the, the logout method is going to look very similar. So I'm going to say this af auth 
dot off dot sign out. All right, so with that, we can wire these two methods up now into our component. So we have, uh, we can create a click event here that says uh, user dot login. And we can do a very similar thing on our logout button. And let's go ahead and take a look at if these work. So uh, can't read property UID of null in our user service. Let's take a look at that. Uh, that may have been an earlier error. Oh, no. Uh, so actually, this is a, a valid error. So what's happening is the uh, Firebase is returning an auth state that doesn't really exist. And so what we can do is we can say we don't care about, uh, actually, we do care about these. So an, an empty auth state uh, basically means the user does not have an, uh, a UID. So let's go ahead and just elaborate this method just a tiny bit and say, if not auth state, Return false, or let's actually return null. Otherwise, let's return the actual UID. All right, and clean that up a little bit. All right, so now we're getting a null out of this. So a null is an assertion that we do not have a logged in user. If I hit login, I'm going to see the nice pop up from Google. And then the moment that comes back, I see my user ID, and this user ID is specific to my app. Now we haven't wired up the admin superpowers yet, so let's go ahead and do that. And so uh, the way I really like to do this is I like to define um, basically a new path here in my Firebase. And so what I do is I typically create uh, such as an admin keys. And then what I do is I'll have a set of user IDs that map into Booleans. So let's just say, uh, there's my key, and then this is true. Now, uh, I would definitely want to lock this down and only give permissions to uh, anyone that's in the admins to access this or modify this, but really anyone can read it. It doesn't really matter if you can see who is uh, an administrator. And so now what we can do is we can use the power of the real-time database to wire up the role-based access permissions. So anything that we're going to do for admin here, you could actually do for any user role. You, you could have admins, you could have super admins, you could have sysops, you could have uh, customers, etc. cetera. Um, all of these can work exactly the same and they can flow through to your component in the same way. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add another dependency here. So we're going to import the Angular Fire Database from Angular Fire 2 slash database. Helps to spell things correctly as always. All right, now that I've got the database module injected here, or uh, imported, now we can inject it. So we can say private DB is a Angular Fire Database. So with this, what we're going to do is we're going to define a new observable that defines whether or not we are an administrator. Um, now, I really like to do this as a, uh, a map off of our UID. So what I'm going to say is um, this dot UID dot map, excuse me, dot pipe. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and define some operations that take our UID and do something with it. So first, I'm going to detect if there is uh, a, if we have nothing in our UID. Uh, let's, let's try not to shadow this variable. So let's, actually, I think it's fine. Um, so if not UID, return false, that one's pretty clear. Um, and then what we can do is we can say else, then we're going to return a and let's, let's switch map this instead of mapping it. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to now return an endpoint in the real-time database. So we can say return db this.db.object. And now this can be a reference. So we know that it's slash admins plus UID. So if we get a UID back from the author authorization service or the authentication service, then we're going to do a database lookup and return that as an observable. Uh, and we just need to get value changes here in order to get that back as an observable. 
And so at the end of the day, what this should represent is that the is admin is going to be uh, false if the user doesn't have a permission or if they are logged out, and it should be true if they exist in this key. Uh, and so this needs to be just an observable of false. All right, so let's format that. And if we wanted to, we could add some extra typings here just to make sure that we haven't messed anything up. So we could say this is an observable of Boolean. Uh, so we actually have to say that this is going to be a Boolean. And now the typing should all match up because this is always going to be a uh, Boolean. And just make sure that I synchronize admin with admin. And let's give this a try now. So this user has admin superpowers, and now we should be able to, in real time, just kind of side by side, make changes to this. And so if I delete this key, the user is actually going to lose those admin permissions in real time. This is one of my favorite parts of this. And if you granted those permissions in real time, uh, so if we just made that key again, the app will respond. And so this is how you build really very responsive interfaces that the user doesn't even have to log out. They don't have to move a single inch in the application and they can see exactly what the permissions they have are. And you can actually reflect those across the entire application. So I often do this so that um, if a user gains permissions or loses permissions, uh, I use that to put edit buttons throughout the application so that the user knows they have admin superpowers. Uh, and we can log out and just let, uh, the app know that we're done. So with that, we've built a uh, application, we've used RxJS, we've defined a not only uh, a test to see if the user is logged in, but then a test to see if they have specific permissions defined in the database. Uh, so that's it for today. Hope to see you in the next one.